All right, now we're going to start covering indirect fire, and we're going to start with onboard mortars. Onboard mortars are like this German 50 millimeter mortar that I have laid out here, and you can tell by the stats on it by looking at its range of 2 to 30 that mortars are one of the few units that are going to have a minimum range. So this 50 millimeter mortar could not fire at units that were adjacent to it. They also can't fire if they're located in a building, a bunker, forest, heavy jungle, or any other module specific terrain that's going to have something above them because obviously the mortar is going to take and hit that. Now, mortars can take and fire on their own impulse directly at enemy units. So this mortar could take and fire at this American squad over here using the same procedure that I'm getting ready to show you for indirect fire. Now, the key thing with mortars is they can fire indirectly. So let's say this mortar was instead behind this line of trees and would not have a line of sight to the American squad. A leader, scout, or advisor could take and call in indirect fire onto enemy units. So our German leader here could take and call in the mortar's firepower. And the leader would be marked with an ops complete marker but he could not use his leadership modifier for the mortar's attack and he would not be able to later use his leadership modifier for other units in his hex if they were making a direct fire attack. Now what you're going to do for indirect fire is you're going to have the unit, like the leader, declare the hex that they're targeting and then the mortar is going to take and roll 2d6 and pick the higher of the two and add that to their firepower. So let's say our mortar here rolled a four and a two, they would take the four and add that to their firepower, giving them a total firepower of six. And that would be compared against the defending hex's normal defensive roll of a 1d6 with any applicable uh, direct fire table modifiers they will have. Now there are certain modifiers that are not going to apply when it comes to onboard mortars. And that's going to be any degrading terrain in between them as the mortar's firing over any walls or if the unit's on a hill. None of those uh, modifiers are going to apply for the defending unit. Now, once the defending unit makes its roll, you're going to compare the two as normal. And if the attacker's roll is equal to or less than, it's going to have no effect. And if it's greater, you'll take the difference and conduct a normal um, damage check for the defending units as you would usually. The last thing that you'll do is you'll take and mark the affected hex with a fired for effect marker. And this is gonna make this hex considered degrading terrain for the rest of the turn. And any other units that enter the hex are going to be attacked by the mortar's attack for the remainder of the turn. So if our other squad here were to move into that hex, they would have to resolve an attack against them as well.